And now, AM650 presents your source for leading-edge news and information on today's hottest products and services. This is Experts on Call on AM650. Well, good evening and welcome to Experts on Call. It's all about pets, specifically dogs. It's uh, Phil Moriarty back with us from the BC Canine Training Center in Richmond. Hello, Phil. Hello, Sterling. How was your How was your Canada Day yesterday? It was It was just great. Mm -hmm. Nice to have a holiday in the middle of the week. Love that kind. Yeah, when there's when there's no rain. Well, that's right. And you know, it's it's a great kickoff to summer. We're in the good weather here, and so when we start talking about summertime and our dogs, we need to actually take a second and and have that conversation because in the summertime we've had this conversation once before I remember going through it last summer and there are some specific things that dogs experience in the summertime remarkably similar to humans that we perhaps overlook because well they're dogs and we're not. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, so let's But they t- are biological beings. That's true and therefore susceptible to things like a heat stroke and we certainly know about that. Mhm. Yeah. Yeah, we've had some uh, bad experiences about that in the news recently. Exactly. Uh, but you know, everybody should take a take a, um, a moment to think about what they do with their dogs in the in the summertime too. Mm-hmm. Especially the hot weather coming up, and we've had some nice weather now, and it's going to get even hotter. Uh, heat stroke is one of the things that they're that, that uh, dogs are susceptible. To just like humans are. Okay, now heat stroke is simply exposure to the outdoors and super warm temperatures to the point where you you actually just can't handle it anymore. People have to sit down and go inside and and have, find a shady spot or preferably some air conditioning. I assume that would probably work for a dog too. Yeah, heat, heat stroke is when your body temperature increases to where you um, uh, sufficiently high that uh, your body can't handle it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, and. Um, uh, most common reason for for that is uh, people leaving their dogs in cars yes. or outside uh, playing, and they don't have sufficient water uh, to uh, hydrate themselves, and uh, not enough shade, mm-hmm. uh, those sorts of things, or too much exercise. Uh, you know, and the dog doesn't. Um, you put the dog out. You're playing with the dog. You're having fun with it, and uh, you leave it out all day. But you've been playing with it, say first thing in the morning when it's uh, when it's nice and cool out. Right. Right. Well, the dog hasn't uh, properly hydrated, and now it's laying outside and uh, doesn't have proper hydration. And um, so that can lead to heat stroke, too. Okay, now the hydration, if the dog has an abundant supply of water, mm-hmm. will the animal hydrate itself to, to the to where it should? Oh, well, to the extent that the water is available. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so our yeah. job as the human in mm-hmm. this equation is to make sure that on hot days, there's plenty of is it necessarily cold water? Well, it doesn't really matter whether it's cold water, but it, it has to be water. Yeah, exactly. It, it has to be wet. Okay. Uh, the cold water, uh, you know, if it's out there long enough, it's going to become warm water anyway. True. It's going to be temperature water. Okay. And, and this whole business of leaving dogs, let alone humans, in vehicles on hot days. And, well, you know, I had the window open. You know, I, I couldn't have open, opened it too far because then he'd get out. Mm-hmm. But I had it open so he could stick his nose out and, and breathe and, you know, get the... Well, you know, if it's 30 degrees outside, Lord only knows what the temperature is inside, but a, a little snoot sticking out of a cracked window into a 30-degree afternoon isn't exactly cooling the dog off, is it? No, no. And and they they warm from the uh, from the bottom up, and they have to cool from the bottom up. Right. So, you know, he, his nose sticking out of windows may be getting some oxygen to him, but it's not uh, cooling off. And the, you know, when you think about it, uh, glass can magnify the, the um, effects of the sun. Sure it can, yeah. So, you, you know, th- there, you'd almost have to have a fan in there that was blowing and keeping a, a, an equalized temperature. Sure. So it's not a good idea to think that uh, just because the window's down a little bit that there's going to be a breeze blowing through. Now, there. we see dogs in the summertime all the time, and they're kind of walking around, and their tongue's hanging out the side of their face, and it looks kind of kind of laid back and in some cases kind of funny and in others cute. But uh, that tongue hanging out on a hot day is one of the few ways the dog has of actually cooling itself off, correct? That's right, yeah. yeah. So if, dogs don't sweat. Right. And they hydrate by panting and, uh, you know, uh, 
so when you see a dog that's panting, he, he's really just hydrating. Right. Uh, and But if you, for example, typically muzzle your dog, Phil, mm-hmm. uh, that's not a particularly great thing on a super hot day to leave that muzzle on. If you, if you muzzle your dog while you're walking, you go out for a 10-minute walk or whatever, fine. But to leave the muzzle on on a hot day when the dog relies on that tongue uh, for cooling purposes is really counterproductive, isn't it? Yeah, well, if you're muzzling the dog and leaving the muzzle on, there's got to be a reason for it. Right. And, um, uh, you know, th- that that leads me to, to other questions. <laughs> Why would you have to muzzle your dog all day? Right. Uh, dog certainly know, sounds at that point like a candidate for the BC Canine Training Center now, well, doesn't it, it? It probably has some behavior modification requirement. Absolutely. Uh, but, you know, some breeds required are, are required to be muzzled when they're when they're out uh, for walks anyway. Yes, right. Uh, so being careful of those breeds, uh, a couple of things about those breeds too, um, typically the, the, the terriers and the bull breeds, um, they're short-haired. And um, uh, they're more susceptible to to sunburn and uh, the effects of the sunshine and the hot weather. Uh, also, if they're muzzled, they're not uh, able to, to breathe quite as easily and hydrate quite as easily. Right. So if you're going for a robust, uh, vigorous walk w- with that dog and, it, and he's uh, because you're trying to get some energy out of him, and get them exercise. Mm-hmm. You've really got to make sure that uh, when the muzzle comes off in your home, that you don't exercise. You haven't exercised him too much, but then you're hydrating him when he gets home too. Mm-hmm. Now and, you, you but, mentioned, but I, I would not conceive of a reason why you would need to muzzle a dog uh, after the walk. Exactly, exactly. Now you mentioned sunburn. Well, I could conceive of a reason, but then that's where the training comes in. That's right, and and so we're back to that dog likely being a candidate for the BC Canine Training Center. You mentioned sunburn, Phil. Now, again, this is something that humans, we wear the big floppy hats and slap on the sunscreen and we're really, and we're trying hard to be conscientious about it, but not many of us actually think of our dogs as being, well, sunburnable, if you know what I mean. They've got hair, they're covered in fur, they're fine. Come on. Yeah. Well, a lot of the short-haired dogs, especially the white uh, and fair breeds, mm-hmm. the, the fair colors, uh, just like us, you know, that they're, they're less um, uh, able to handle uh, direct sunlight. Uh, and you, you find that, uh, you know, you wonder why your dog's digging in the backyard and, you know, that, that's one of the instinctive things that dogs do in order to, um, to cool off. They, they start to dig a little um, uh, hole for themselves and uh, they can cool off that way. Get down in and lie down on the cool yeah, dirt. Yeah, because it's cooler. Yeah. Interesting. So that, uh, that, that annoying... So if you can find a nice shady spot where you don't mind the dog digging to, right. to cool himself off, then y- you can re- redirect him to um, you know, appropriate places to... Uh, to to start his cooling. No, off. but it's it's. I use the word annoying because some some people don't appreciate having their backyards dug up by Rover mm-hmm. uh, after all the the gardening work they've been doing. But it's mm-hmm. it's it's just an instinctive cooling behavior that you can modify to the extent at least have them dig over here rather than where you've done all the work over the yeah. last few months. Yeah, it's not likely you're going to be able to get them to dig in a in a spot where it's not shaded. Right, of course, it, of course. You know, if his purpose is to, to cool off. So if you've got a nice shaded spot where, uh, where, where he could dig and he could cool off there. You ever walk across a, a wooden deck on a hot, hot, sunny afternoon mm-hmm. in your bare feet mm-hmm. and you go, oh, ooh, ah, ah, ooh, ah. And you can't wait to get to the grass? Yeah. Well, dogs have foot pads that are a little tougher than the bottom of a human's foot, but nonetheless are susceptible to that kind of burning sure. stuff, aren't they? Sure, yeah. yeah. So uh, what remedies or what approaches can we take to kind of ward that off or at least to increase our awareness of the fact... I guess a fact... couple of things. If you're not going to walk on it in bare feet, I wouldn't be putting my dog on it in huh. bare feet. Well, that's fair ball, isn't it? Sure. Okay. Uh, so, you know, you, you can test out the surroundings. You, you know, if you're, if you're home, um, you've got an animal that is, uh, is a family member. Why not test out uh, different places and do an inventory of uh, places that it can be comfortable and can't be comfortable sure. under different circumstances? So if the dog is, uh, you know, if it's a hot, sunny day and um, the, the dog's inside, 
and uh, you put them outside, go out and test it first to see, you know, what the area is that you're going to put, uh, you know, if you're going to put them out in the back porch and the back porch isn't uh, shaded right. and it's in the direct sunlight. Right. You might as well. As he can burn his paws just like anybody else. Exactly. Can. Okay. So, again, just a little common or, sense or, or goes or a long you, way. Yeah. Or if you don't have much greenery and you've got a paved backyard, uh, right. you know, driveway, you know, uh, just check it out. Mm-hmm. Okay. I mean, sometimes what you can do is just hose it down and cool it off and leave the dog out for a little while, but don't uh, leave them so long that it uh, dries up and and uh, becomes hot again. Right. Now, you talked about hydration a couple of times already, and, of mm-hmm. course, on these hot summer days. Uh, it's interesting. People have all sorts of great tricks to help the dogs hydrate and have fun at the same time. People play catch games with ice cubes, for example. Sure. Dogs yeah. love to chew up ice cubes sure. or, or at least chase them around or try to eat them. And it's kind of fun to watch, actually, yeah. especially the first time. But yeah. other hydration tips and tricks so that doggy stays uh, refreshed and cooled and possibly even has a, has a little bit of fun in the process. Sure. Yeah, it's important that... You know, it's uh, two things happening. You're exercising the dog, but it's still uh, uh, trying to keep itself cool. Sure, sure. So any game that you can come up with in that regard is uh, is probably a, a good thing. But again, uh, any game that you can come up with uh, is going to require energy. Energy requires, you know, is is heat. True. And uh, you know, in a hot sunny environment make sure that the dog has plenty of water Mm -hmm. okay and even if it is in the form of ice uh, uh, as an occasional treat yeah and a lot of people uh you know oh my dog's hot so they'll get a nice cold towel and put it on the dog well you're better off putting it on the ground and letting the dog lay on it oh okay because they, they they cool from the bottom up I was going to say, you know, another typical uh, reaction on a hot day is to grab the garden hose and give Fido a good old shower. Yeah, that's good, and he'll like that. Right, so that's that's okay. Well, he, he, he may like it. Some dogs, some are, dogs are, are keen on the hose. <laughs> yeah, I mean, some dogs just lap it up, but, mm-hmm. uh, you know, eventually if you found the wet spot, what you might be able to do is make a, a sort of a mist spray instead of right. a, uh, the a, heavy a direct stuff. spray. Yeah, right, yeah. yeah. Okay, but so the, the, the thing is to remember that in terms of how a dog cools itself off, that wet towel to lie on is at least as effective as a misty shower on top of the fur. Sure. Uh, a nice I'll, cool, I'll, wet towel, and that just cools the whole body from the bottom up. Yeah, it cools the body up. Right. Instead of cooling it down. All right. Yeah, with the with the with the the shower. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's talk about other summer activities that we like to include our pets in. Certainly, when we go on vacation, hitting the old campgrounds or the cottage or whatever, mm-hmm. we like to have uh, Rover around. And uh, especially for you know, the, the, for for my money, uh, if you can't, uh, when they issue, issue campfire bans, I stop thinking about camping because for me. The campfire. With your money, you don't need to camp. Well, no, it's a, it's it's the, the the camping is about the if campfire. If I had your money, I wouldn't be camping. Well, if you had my money, <laughs> I wouldn't be able to. Is that You'd what you're trying to say? You'd still be trying to find <laughs> and start up the BCK9 training center. I see. But you know, when, when we go out camping and and we have the the dog with us and, and there, there's food around, mm-hmm. there's a there's there there can be some problems here, especially uh, if uh, if the animal isn't particularly conditioned to being around a barbecue or outdoor cooking uh, things uh, they'll come along and swipe a pork chop off the off the, the fire if they can if they think they can get away with it and that can be a, a pretty painful uh, lesson for the dog to learn yeah uh, you know a couple of things with fires is uh, uh, dogs like playing with sticks mm-hmm. and uh, if you if you've had a fire you know it's not going to go up to the fire and take a, a stick off the fire true but once the fire is out if it's not properly cooled and the dog uh, grabs onto one of those sticks he can still you know still burn himself sure and on the uh, on the barbecue uh, the, the flames gone the foods uh, you know there's there's a couple of leftover pieces of meat on the barbecue oh, yeah. that's starting to cool but it's still I mean the dog can still burn itself by taking uh, something off the barbecue so you know be careful around uh, uh, having your pet around, those types of things. Now, we need to take a break here, but we know most of the fun was last night, of course, down at Canada Place and at various municipalities around the Lower Mainland with the big Canada Day fireworks show last night. Dogs and fireworks, Phil, just, uh, that's oil and water. They just do not mix well. Fireworks, generally speaking, scare the bejeepers out of dogs, and people insist on bringing them to these fireworks shows. I don't get that. 
Um, yeah, okay, well, let's talk about that after the break. Then. All right, let's take a quick break here. Our guest is Phil Moriarty from the BC Canine Training Center down there at the foot of Number 3 Road right on the river in Richmond. We'll back with lots more after this message. Delivering relevant and beneficial consumer information. This is Experts on Call. And there's more still ahead on AM 650.